Hi everybody, uh, this is Dr. L here with a, uh, another quick installment and today's topic is portfolio optimization. Uh, let's just jump right into it. So just recall um, that we were considering a problem where we were trying to set up a portfolio with N risky assets uh, where we treated every asset return as a random variable given by this vector R. And we also had some uh, return data Okay, namely, uh, we were able to calculate the mean returns for each asset, the variances of the returns of each asset, and the covariances, uh, which is what we recall was our measure of some systematic shared risk uh, between each asset. Um, so we should have all this data as a prerequisite to uh, setting up an optimization problem for the portfolio. And, and given all this data from the return information, uh, our objective was to try to optimally structure a portfolio by choosing the weights subject to uh, first and foremost some criteria. Uh, so there's some objective, right? Um, and it's either you know risk minimization uh, or trying to maybe maximize the expected return of the portfolio. But usually uh, it's some combination of those two, depending on the preferences of uh, the client that you might be uh, handling to do the optimization problem for. Uh, and the other constraint is that the weights across all the uh, assets in the portfolio have to sum up to one. They have to add up to 100%. Um, note that we could add a non-negativity constraint on the weights uh, if we did not want to allow um, for taking a short position in the assets, uh, but we're going to ignore this for now and assume that we can uh, take both short and long positions in each asset. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we'll take a look first at just the basic problem of uh, finding the minimum variance portfolio given that you've chosen a couple assets. Uh, so formally the problem uh, can be written out as this minimization problem. Hey, notice my constraint here, uh, that the weights have to sum to unity, but I did not include any non-negativity constraints, so we are allowing for short selling here. Uh, and we can expand the uh, variance okay, by incorporating the weights and the covariance variance information. And uh, just note, we discussed this variance decomposition in class here. You have uh, sort of this term that captures the idiosyncratic risk of each stock, right? We're just adding up the variance terms there uh, with the individual weights for each asset. Uh, and the second term is capturing more that, that uh, systematic component of the risk that the, the assets share. These are all the covariance terms being added up with the appropriate weights. Okay, so we're going to uh, do an example in Excel for the case of two assets. Uh, so this problem generalizes fairly easily to the case with two assets here. Um, but just recall, you can use this formula provided below uh, to easily generalize to an example where you have maybe 10 assets or 20 assets. Okay, but we're going to start simple here just for this example, make sure we can use the Excel solver and that we understand how the analytical solution to this problem is, is, uh, is also verified by our computational uh, exercise in Excel. So for the case with only two assets, I uh, have to have the weights in these assets add up to one. Okay, and we can rewrite the objective function now for the case of just uh, two risky assets here. So now I have two choice variables, W1 and W2. Uh, we'll see I'll be able to eliminate those, one of those choice variables quickly by using the constraint that they have to add up to one and substituting that back into the objective, uh, which we're going to do right now. Um, so notice that the constraint itself we can rewrite here. Right? W2 has to equal one minus W1. And now I can substitute for W2 right back in, up into the objective function right in the middle there. And uh, when I do that, you'll notice now I'm able to rewrite the constrained optimization problem as an unconstrained maximum, uh, minimization problem in just one variable here. So we've done this substitution out uh, for W2s for our 1 minus W1 term. Okay, all that's left now is to uh, take the derivative, set it equal to 0, um, under the assumption that the variance is convex in the weights, which it, it is. Um, so we're going to take the first derivative here using the power and some combination of power and chain rules. Okay, and again, the first order condition is a necessary one, but it's also sufficient since the variance is convex in the weights. Um, and here's what the first order condition looks like. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of algebra with this. Okay, notice first thing that every single term is multiplied by two. So I could divide the left and the right side by two, get rid of the twos, the right hand side's still zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is expand the terms in parentheses. So I'm going to just distribute what they're multiplied by. And we're going to wind up here. And you'll notice now uh, I've moved all the terms that do not have a W1 over to the right-hand side. 
and all we're going to have to do now is factor out a w1 on the left hand side of the equation uh, and divide by what remains and this will give us our solutions okay so notice here's our value for w1 which we got directly from that first order condition and you can see how it depends on the variance of each asset and the covariances uh, and recall w2 is just all the remainder of the portfolio that wasn't allocated to W1. So W2 is just 1 minus W1. Uh, we can also compute the expression for that analytically. Now, um, we know if we were given data on the covariances and variances of these assets, we could plug them into this formula here, and we'd be, we'd be good to go in terms of finding the uh, weights that would actually minimize the risk of the entire portfolio together. Uh, but we want to verify this numerically, right? The two case is pretty easy analytically, but if you wanted to do, uh, for, for example, a portfolio with three assets uh, or four or five, then it might be better to incorporate um, the methods of Lagrange using your Lagrange multiplier and the uh, Kuhn-Tucker conditions for optimization. Uh, it's a little bit out of our wheelhouse at this point, so we're going to focus now on computationally solving this, and we'll rely on using Excel um, to do the bigger problems when we need to or maybe some, some computational program, not necessarily Excel. So, <clears throat> I've set up a spreadsheet here. Notice uh, I've already summarized the asset return data in this left panel here. Um, uh, you know, ideally, you're going to go online, you can uh, pull the uh, historical data of a stock return over a certain horizon, and you can estimate these things very easily. Um, notice the blue cells here are going to be my weights for assets one and two. I've labeled them W1 and W2, but I'll delete that in just a second and leave those cells blank. Uh, also, the objective function for this problem was to minimize the variance. Uh, we can play around with a couple different objectives, but uh, we'll focus first on solving this problem. We'll make sure that the analytical result and the computation result match up. Um, and then we can talk about well, what happens if we want to add in some weirder constraints, what happens if I want to find the smallest portfolio subject to the constraint that it gets maybe at least a certain minimal amount of return, and we'll discuss how to go ahead and do that. Okay, uh, by the way, notice my, I've left these green cells here open for constraints, uh, and I'll show you how to deal with those in a second. In the meantime, let me go ahead and empty these cells uh, so there's no more text inside of them. And first thing I want to do is compute the objective, right? So our objective is to minimize the variance of the portfolio. So I'm going to go ahead and compute that now. So the variance, recall, of the portfolio. Okay, let me just click back here. Let's go back a couple slides. Go over the variance formula. Okay, here's the variance. Let's go back even further. Here, here's our general problem. Okay, so I'm going to add up all these terms here with the, the uh, first the variances times the weight squared plus the covariance times each of the weights for each asset where there's a covariance. So here's our formula. We're going to take the weight on asset one, which will make uh, this first box here. We're going to square it. We're going to multiply that by the variance of asset one plus. I'm going to take the weight on asset 2, square it, multiply it by the variance of asset 2, and then I'm going to have two covariance terms, but they're actually going to be the same. Right? I'm going to have covariance R1, R2 times the weights W1, W2, and then I'll have the same term with the indices reversed. So really it's going to be 2 times that term, which is going to be the weight on asset 1, times the weight on asset 2, times the covariance between these assets. Okay, so notice it's showing 0 right now, but you'll notice we could easily mess around with these weights and get that thing to change. Okay, and our goal is going to be to choose the weights using the Excel solver to minimize this value in yellow here, subject to our constraints. Now recall, we do have a constraint, and the constraint was that the weights have to sum to 1. So in this box, let's compute the sum of these weights which right now is going to show zero, okay, but I need those to add up to one. So I'll put what they're equal to in the right box in the constraint, and the left side is going to be the part of the constraint that the computer is able to uh, vary to make sure that it's uh, matched up with the right part of the constraint. Okay, so let's invoke the solver function here and go ahead and solve this. So I'm going to hit data up top. Uh, if you don't have the solver plugin, all you have to do is right-click the space, go to customize your quick access toolbar, 
uh, and then it should give you an option here for add-ins. You click add-ins, and then there's the solver add-in. You just go ahead and then click uh, go, and it will allow you to choose which add-ins you want. Hit OK, and then your solver add-in should show up in the top right. Okay, so let's go ahead and <clears throat> use the solver add-in. I'm gonna so let's do that. So notice it asked me to set the objective. Okay, so my objective is to minimize which cell I'm minimizing this variant cell, which is H2. Sorry, I'm going to move this around here a little bit. Okay, so we're minimizing that variant cell. And I'm going to do this by changing the variable cells, which are the weights, these two, E3 and F3. And then I don't want to forget about my constraints, so I'm going to add a constraint. Okay, and the first constraint is that the left-hand side, which was the sum of the weights, this cell, has to actually equal, it's got to be equal to, the weights have to add up to 1, the right cell. Okay, notice the constraints added, and uh, it says make unconstrained variables non-negative. Uh, we actually do not want that checked. Um, if we did that, then we're only allowing for short selling, so just be aware of that. And the solving method here, I'm going to use this GRG nonlinear. Um, you could use the evolutionary method. Uh, what that does is it uses an algorithm that breaks the optimization problem into a lot of uh, little sub problems. It takes a little bit longer. Um, but if you do have issues with uh, local minima and local maxima, it may, it may be better as a robustness check versus the uh, GRG nonlinear algorithm here. Um, but we can, you should stick with this. This should be okay. Um, and, and both methods should give you the same solution, so we're going to go ahead and solve this. Press solve. Okay, and notice it says here that the solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. I'll hit OK, and notice what it tells us to do. It says, hey, you're going to put 75% in asset 1, you're going to put 25% in asset 2, and notice the optimized variance of the portfolio is actually 13.1375, which is actually uh, lower than the variances of either of the assets. So we've, we've done a good job here. Okay, if I wanted to know the expected return of that portfolio, I could compute that easily. All I have to do is uh, take the weights of each asset in that portfolio, multiply it by the expected return of each asset, and sum across all the assets. Okay, so my expected return for that portfolio is 12.5%. Uh, hey, okay, now, uh, maybe I'm interested in what is the least risky portfolio I could achieve uh, subject to the constraint that I get some minimal risk that's maybe higher than 12.5%. So we'll examine the problem in a second. What happened if I wanted to find the least risky portfolio subject to the constraint that I make at least 13% uh, return? Um, but in the meantime, let's check that these weights are correct in terms of our analytical solution. So I'm going to pull up our slides again. And let's verify here. All right, this was our analytical solution that we had derived using the first order conditions of optimization and the constraint. And we can plug in our values. And you'll notice that we do get uh, exactly the same solution uh, using these values. So the analytical solution does match the numerical solution. So you should be pretty confident the Excel solver does work well. Okay, but let's go ahead and ask ourselves, what would happen if I also added the constraint? Okay, so let's uh, delete the weights again and reset the problem. This should usually be done, uh, so that way there's no problems with initial values uh, with the algorithm. Um, but let's reset the weights. And let's ask ourselves, well, what happens if I wanted to make sure also that the constraint uh, that we're going to add in here, the second constraint notice that I left room for, is going to be that the expected return, so that's just this cell that we just computed, that thing we want to be at least 13%, right? We saw that the solution to the last problem uh, had the expected return of the minimum variance portfolio of 12.5%. Uh, Let's see what, what the best we can do is in terms of the least risk we can achieve if I wanted to get at least a 13% return in the portfolio. So again, uh, we're going to invoke the solver. Okay, I'm still, my objective is still 
uh, to control H2 here, minimize it by changing E3 and EF, subject to still the constraint that the weights have to add up to one, but I do need to add in a constraint. I need to add in now the constraint that I need my return here to be at least, so greater than or equal to, it needs to be at least 13%. So go ahead and add that, and let's go ahead and solve it. Okay, solver found a solution again. All constraints are satisfied. You can move this over now. And you can see now what happened. Well, uh, it looks like I put a little less into asset one, which notice is the least risky but lower return asset. I put a little bit more into asset two here. That brought up the return of the portfolio, but notice I did sacrifice a little bit of risk in order to do that. So our result here is very consistent with the risk return trade-off. Um, so that's it for this segment. Hope that was helpful and good luck.